Hey, what's up? It's Amy with Amy Reads YA, and this is an absolute shit show of a video. Today, I am going to be doing my September TBR, which also coincides with Emojiathon. Now, since I am new to BookTube, I have never done Emojiathon before. I am excited. This is exciting. I first heard about Emojiathon through Common Spence. I will link him below along with the other hosts who I do not follow, but now I'm going to subscribe as soon as I put this up because I want to follow everybody involved in Emojiathon. It sounds super cool and exactly my speed. I need a month long readathon because I, my weeks are way too unpredictable. So if I can get a month to read as many books as I can, I think I can accomplish this. This is awesome. So to kind of weave things together here, my initial idea for a September TBR was to finally take care of the pile of books I have received from subscription boxes over the last year so that I never got to. I'm really, really bad about reading books that come in subscription, subscription boxes, even if I'm excited about the titles. That being said, I didn't realize how bad I actually was with this. I have so many books from book boxes over the last year that I have not read that it's excessive. My TBR for the month is very, very excessive. It's not going to happen. Whatever. We'll just roll with it. It's fun to try. It's fun to set goals. So I'm not going to do the TBR until I'm done the Emojiathon thing. That's the whole point of this video. I just wanted to throw in why some of my choices fell into these options. All the rules to Emojiathon, all the different links and everything, I'm basically just going to cop copy straight from Spencer's blurb and all the information that you need will be down below. But please go subscribe to all the hosts, they are working hard, and not to mention Spencer from Common Spence is absolutely fucking hilarious. So he gives me life. Like. I sometimes he says stuff that is so funny that I have to pull my husband and be like, baby, you just gotta see this. You, you don't book, you don't know anything about books, but you just have to see this because Spencer's funny. So, without further ado, emoji a thon. There are 25 prompts. There's a bingo board. That's fun. I like games. You can mix and match the prompts. They, you don't have to read 25 books. Jesus, God. But if you find the time to read 25 books, please tell me how because I would love to do that. I have picked about, <laughs> I think about 18 books, so that's fun. Anyway, group book. Number one, this will be the dancing girls emoji. Also, I'm absolute garbage at putting things in my videos, so if you want to see the emojis that go along with the prompts, either check the links below to other people's videos or just look at your phone after I say what they are. So the group book is the Dancing Bunny Girls emoji, <laughs> and that is I Am Still Alive by Kate Alice Marshall. I've seen a lot of buzz about this book, and it, it actually is on my Goodreads TBR, so that's awesome, knocking things out there. Here is the general synopsis from Goodreads. After, Jess is alone. Her cabin is, has burned to the ground. She knows if she doesn't act fast, the cold will kill her before she has time to worry about food. But she is still alive, for now. Before, Jess hadn't seen her survivalist off the grid dad in over a decade, but after a car crash killed her mother and left her injured, she was forced to move into his cabin in remote Canadian wilderness. Just as Jess was beginning to get to know him, a secret from his past paid them a visit, leaving her father dead and Jess stranded. After. With only her father's dog for company, Jess must forage and hunt for food, build shelter, and keep herself warm. Some days it feels like the wild is out to destroy her, but she's stronger than she ever imagined. Jess will survive. She has to. She knows who killed her father, and she wants revenge. Ah! It sounds great. It sounds like something that I've never heard of before. And that's amazing when books still manage to be completely new and creative. So... That is I Am Still Alive by Kate Alice Marshall. That is the group book. That also can fit several of the other challenges which you will um, come to find out. Next up is the freebie space um, and that is a emoji of books and that's anything you want. So that literally could be any of the books on your TBR. That obviously is to be determined. Um, since I want to read I Am Still Alive I might actually just use it for that. 
Next up is another, is one of the hosts Dylan's pick. Uh, his emoji is a taco. Hey Dylan, I don't know you, but I think I like you based on that. And that is Letters to the Lost by Bridget Kemmerer. Kemmerer? I have never heard of this. It is very pretty. The cover is gorgeous. And it is the first in a series. So thanks for that. If I like it now, I've got to add more books to my TBR. Julia Young always writes letters to her mother, a world-traveling photojournalist. Even after her mother's death, she leaves letters at her grave. It's the only way that Juliet can cope. Declan Murphy, side note, the name Declan, I love it. Oh my god, I love it. And side note, Declan Murphy is, isn't the sort of guy you want to cross. In the midst of his court-ordered community service at the local cemetery, it's bizarre, he's trying to escape the demons of his past. When Declan reads a haunting letter left beside a grave, he can't resist writing back. Soon he's opening up to a perfect stranger and their connection is immediate, but neither Declan nor Juliet knows that they're not actually strangers. When life at school interferes with their secret life of letters, sparks will fly as Juliet and Declan discover truths that might tear them apart. That sounds really, really good. It sounds sad and emotional and I like it. I love anything that involves writing letters. So that is Letters to the Lost by Bridget Kemmerer, and that is Dylan's pick for Emojiathon, the taco emoji. Next up is a book by your favorite author, and for that one, I call it the shaky heart emoji. It's the heart with the little vibrations above it. Shaky heart emoji. For that, um, I don't have the book, I have to place the order, but for that I am going to continue on in the Throne of Glass series. If you guys have watched any of my other videos, you know that I'm a garbage person and I have read all of the Court series, but I have not actually read Throne of Glass. So this is my first time through. I don't know, I don't, I also don't really have like a favorite author. Theirs might be. So that being said, R.L. Stein's probably my favorite author because he was my favorite growing up. Anyway, the next best thing I can say about this is Sarah J. Mass is probably my current favorite author. So I went with, um, well, not Throne of Glass because I am currently reading it. So by the time this emoji a thon starts coming around, I will be on Crown of Midnight, which I have not ordered yet. I have to do that. Sorry, I'm like looking down at Bubba because he's biting his toes on my lap while I record. Anyway, that's gonna be my my uh, my pick for favorite author, the shaky heart emoji. Next up is another host, Jay. Jay's pick is grape emojis, and that's cool. I like grapes, not as much as tacos, but I still like grapes. And that is vinyl. It's a vinyl by Sophia Elaine Hansen. I have not heard of this book, but that is a creepy ass cover. And then I read the synopsis and I was like, all right, I like it. I like the way this sounds. This is also the first in the series. All citizens within the soaring black walls of Ravinia have metal singers grafted into their skulls at birth. Ew. The parasitic machines issue a form of auditory hypnosis called the music, which keeps their minds malleable and emotions flat. This is freaking creepy. All artistic expression, especially real music, is strictly prohibited. On the edge of the city, 19-year-old Ranja struggles to support her cousins and disabled mother. A chance meeting leads to her kidnapping by an underground resistance striving to preserve the human spirit. Violently severed from her singer by the brash young agent Roark, Ranja re revels in her newfound freedom until the consequences of her disappearance begin to unfold. That sounds creepy as hell. I absolutely love dystopians. This sounds awesome. Um, I think this could also fit a couple of the other challenges, but again, we'll get to that. And that, so that is Jay's pick, the grape emoji. Next up is Spencer's pick, and that is the crystal ball. Spooky. If you have ever watched a video that Common Spence has put out, you will know that he is obsessed with Radio Silence by Alice Osman. It's on my TBR and it has been since before I started watching Spence, but now I actually am being forced to read this book for this readathon. If you have never heard the synopsis, 
I will read it. What if everything you set yourself up to be was wrong? Frances has always been a study machine with one goal, elite university. Nothing will stand in her way. Not friends, not a guilty secret, not even the person she is on the inside. But when Frances meets Al Alid, the shy genius behind her favorite podcast, she discovers a new freedom. He unlocks the door to the real Frances, and for the first time she experiences true friendship, unafraid to be herself. Then the podcast goes viral and the fragile trust between them is broken. Caught between who she was and who she longs to be, Frances' dreams come crashing down, suffocating with guilt, and she knows that she has to confront her past. She has to confess why Carrie's disappeared. Meanwhile, at uni, Alid is alone, fighting even darker secrets. It's only by facing up to your fears that you can overcome them, and it's only by being your true self that you can find happiness. Frances is going to be need every bit of courage she has. It just sounds like such a heartwarming book with a whole lot of like troublesome things but it sounds overall just like very heartwarming it's sounded good for a long time and now spencer is finally going to make us all read it and that is radio silence by alice Osman. next up is the last our fourth and final host Brittany. this is her pick her emoji is the avocado i like it still taco's got my heart but i like the avocado portion of this and this book is one I have not heard of that had very few reviews on Goodreads so I think it's a well uh, a not well-known book and I think that's really cool to put into a readathon because it's going to open the door for more people to experience not only a not well-known author but a not well-known book and hopefully get a little buzz surrounding it that book is Out of Beat by Cassandra Giovanni you can tell by looking at the cover right away, it is definitely a YA contemporary. Not quite my style, but I'm going to give it a chance. The synopsis goes, Danny Madman Maddox isn't supposed to make Skylar Hayes' heart beat out of rhythm, at least not anymore. She hasn't seen that boyish face, always covered in a five o'clock shadow, dimpled, smiled, dimpled smile and teasing hazel eyes since the day he left to go on tour with her brother Joey's band. Now with a major record label backing them, the band is in need of a bit of help, and when Joey asks Skylar to be the band's photographer, she can't help but say yes. Of course Joey doesn't know about that forbidden kiss, the one Skylar hopes Danny's forgotten. But can she? One smile and she finds herself slipping again, but he's the drummer and he's beaten her heart before, and she won't let it happen again. It sounds okay. I like bands and I like music and I was a photo major in college so I'm gonna give it a go. Like I said YA contemporaries aren't really my thing. I try to read like one a month. I usually like YA contemporaries with problematic issues with heavy subject matter. That doesn't sound to be like that. This just sounds like you know a good YA summer contemporary romance. So I'll give it a go. We'll see. And now we're getting into the books that is actually like part of my TBR, my, my initial September TBR idea, which was to read all of my book box unreads. All right. The next pick is favorite color on a cover, and that is the rainbow emoji. And oh my goodness, I love rainbows. Amazing. Actually, rainbow would probably be my favorite color. So for that, I have two potential picks. Um, they're both book boxes, and we will go over them. <clears throat> the first one is The Glass Spare by Lauren DiStefano, and that has this like ugly mustardy yellow kind of thing, which is probably my favorite fall color. I got this book in Owl Crate, and it seemed okay. The synopsis definitely didn't make me go, oh, I have to read that, but it's gotten a pretty good uh, feedback, so hey, maybe I'm missing something. I'm going to go ahead and read the synopsis. Oh, and also... Signed book plate and also um, gem tattoos. Okay. Wilhelmina Heidel, the fourth child and only daughter of the king of the world's wealthiest nation, has grown up in the shadows. Hey, you're being rude. Kept hidden from the world in order to serve as a spy for her father, whose obsession with building his empire is causing a war, Will wants nothing more than to explore the world beyond her kingdom, if only her father would give her the chance. Until one night Will is attacked and she discovers a dangerous secret. Her touch turns people into gemstone. See why I'm saying this seems silly? Okay. 
At first, Will is horrified by her power, but as she tests the limits, she's drawn more and more to the strange and volatile ability. When it leads to tragedy, though, Will is forced to take the destructive power within her and finally leave her home to seek the truth and a cure. But finding the key to her redemption puts her in the path of a cursed prince who has his own ideas for what to do with Will's power. I bet it's ominous. With a world on the brink of war and a power of ultimate destru destruction, can Will find a way to keep the kingdom that's turned its back on her, or will she betray her past and family forever? That is The Glass Spare by Lauren Stefano. I know the second one is uh, set to come out either this year or early next year. It sounds like the writing, like the writing style seems, oh my goodness, my, like it's, it seems like it could be good. It's just a very silly thing. She can turn people to gemstone. I don't know. It, it that gives me like Shatter Me vibes, vibes, and I hope to God that this is not like Shatter Me because I hate that book. I hope I don't hate this one. The Glass Bear by Lauren Di Stefano. Pick a book with favorite color on the cover. Rainbow. Book number two to fall under the favorite color on a cover. I think I'm cheating a little bit here because this is literally like every color. Is Wild Beauty by Anna Marie McLemore. This was another one I heard pretty good things about it but when I got it I wasn't super super stoked to read it. Love grows such strange things. <clears throat> For nearly a century the Nomalavides, Nomalavides, Baba, put it down. The Nomalavides, that's what I'm calling them, Nomalavides, what the hell? I already am mad at this. For nearly a century, the Nomalavides women have tended the grounds of La Pradera, the lush estate gardens that enchant guests from around the world. They've also hidden a tra tragic legacy. If they fall in love too deeply, their lovers vanish. Oh, that just seems odd. But after, but then, after generations of vanish, vanishings, a strange boy appears in the garden. A boy neither Estrella, the Nomalavides girl who finds him, nor her family knows anything about. The Nomalavides grandmothers treat him like a lost son. The Nomalavides, why do I have to keep saying this impossibly difficult word? The Nomalavides mothers hope he's a sign that, that their vanished loves might reappear. Estrella's cousins worry his presence is a warning that none of them yet understands. But however much the boy is an enigma to them, he's even more of a mystery to himself. All he knows about where he, about who he is or where he came from is the first three letters of his name. As Estrella tries to help Fell piece together his unknown past, La Pradera leads them to secrets as dangerous as they are magical in this stunning exploration of love, loss, and family. That is Wild Beauty by Anna, Macle Anna Marie McLemore. I believe I had heard that this also has some LGBT representation in it as well. So, cool. That could also fall under one of our later challenges. All right. If you guys have read either of those books, if you have a preference, which one you think I should read for that challenge, please let me know. Right now, I'm definitely leaning towards The Glass Bear because the synopsis for Wild Beauty just frustrated me trying to read that. So, all right. Next on the list is give an author a second chance, and that is the facepalm emoji. For this one, I was honestly going to give Shatter Me another try, but I just couldn't bring myself to do it. So instead, I'm going to go with another one that I was not, I wasn't thrilled with the first one, I wasn't thrilled with, with the way the last series ended, and that is The Fates Divide by Veronica Roth. I honestly literally only bought this book when it came out because Target had a signed first edition. So yeah, that's literally the only reason I bought this book. I listened to the first one on audio and I didn't, I didn't feel the same way a lot of people felt about the representation. I don't think that Veronica Roth did anything, meant anything by the way that the representation came across. I, I thought that the, some of that was reaching. Nevertheless, I was not a big fan. I don't really do sci-fi. It's not really my thing. But since I bought it, since 
I didn't really love the first one since she pissed me off with the end of Divergent. I figure I will count this as my given author a second chance face palm emoji challenge. And that is The Fates Divide by Veronica Roth. I'll read the quick synopsis. The lives of Syra no Novak and Akos Karaseth. I, it just took me a minute to remember how to say their names. The lives of Syra Novak and Akos Karaseth are ruled by their fates, spoken by the oracles at their births. Their fates, once determined, are inescapable. Akos is in love with Syra in spite of his fate. He will die in service to Syra's family. And when Syra's father, Lazmet Novak, a soulless tyrant thought to be dead, reclaims the Shotet throne, Akos believes his end is closer than ever. As Lazmet ignites the barbaric war, Syra and Akos are desperate to, to stop him at any cost. For Syra, that could mean taking the life of the man who may or may not be her father. For Akos, it could mean giving his own. In a stunning twist, the two will discover how their fate defines the lives, their lives in ways most unexpected. I actually haven't heard much about this book, so we'll see how it goes. Don't let me down, Veronica. I'm giving you a second chance. Face palm emoji. The next book is a diverse book, and that is the pride flag emoji. Yes, yes, yes. For this one, I picked The Gentleman's Guide to Vice and Virtue. Another one that I got that I wasn't super, super stoked about. Um, but I've heard a lot of good things. I, it comes with a little map. I believe it has a signed book plate somewhere in it. Yep. I put it down there. Signed book plate. I, it's a big book, so for not being super stoked about it, I was like, mm, I'll just sit it there, but I have heard some pretty good things, and I definitely know it's a diverse book. I have heard the main character is incredibly self-aware and confident, which is very, very cool to see in a YA book because that's so rare, and then to add on the fact that he is bisexual and very comfortable in his own skin, like, that's amazing. You really, like... It's very, very hard to find very confident but not cocky YA characters. It is very, very hard to find very good, confident YA characters. Even harder to find them if they are somewhere in the LGBT community and maybe not quite feeling like they fit in. And I know that that's actually a big theme in a lot of books, is coming to terms with how you feel, but I am so excited to read a book about after the fact when you know exactly who you are and you are unashamed and so in love with the way that you are. Amazing. So that made me, once I found out that, it made me want to read this a little bit more. Henry Monty Montague was born and bred to be a gentleman, but he was never one to be tamed. The finest boarding schools in England and the constant disapproval of his father haven't been able to curb any of his roguish passion passions. Not for gambling halls, late nights spent with the bottle of spirits, or waking up in the arms of women or men. I'm here to hang out with Monty. Let's gamble, let's drink. I'm married, can't go hook up with random people, but you can and I will be your wingwoman. But as Monty embarks on his grand tour of Europe, his quest for a life filled with pleasure and vice is in danger of coming to an end. Not only does his father expect him to take over the family's estate upon his return, but Monty is also nursing an impossible crush on his best friend and traveling companion, Percy. Still, it isn't in Monty's nature to give up. Even with his younger sister, Felicity, in tow, he vows to make th this year-long escapade one last hedonistic hurrah and flirt with Percy from Paris to Rome. But when one of Monty's reckless decisions turns their trip abroad into a harrowing manhunt that spans across Europe, it calls into question everything he knows, including his relationship with the boy he adores. So, that is The Gentleman's Guide to Vice and Virtue by Mackenzie Lee, and that is going to fulfill my diverse books pride flag emoji challenge next up this is the longest tbr video oh my goodness next up is a scary book which is the i call it the scream emoji because it reminds me of edward munch the scream um i don't have anything that actually fits scary in my books in my unread um, book box books, but I decided to go with Lifelike by Jay Kristoff. It sounds scary to me. Like I said, sci-fi is not really my thing, but sci-fi is oftentimes pretty scary. 
especially if you look at the back it says your body is not your own your mind is not your own your life is not your own that's freaking scary <laughs> it's just another day in the scrap a quick brawl at the war dome dodge a murder gang stumble upon the deadliest robot ever built 17 year old eve isn't looking for secrets she's already too busy looking over her shoulder the robot gladiator she spent six months building is a smoking wreck, and the only thing keeping her grandpa alive was the handful of credits she just lost to the bookies. Girl, why are you gambling away your grandfather's life like that? Worst of all, she's discovered she can destroy machines with nothing more than her mind, and a bunch of pur puritanical fanatics are building a coffin her size. If she's ever had a worse day, Eve can't remember it. But when Eve discovers the ruins of a beautiful android boy named Ezekiel buried in a scrap pile she calls home, her entire world is turned upside down. With her best friend and robotic sidekick in tow, she and Ezekiel will trek across deserts of irradiated glass, battle cyborg assassins, and scour abandoned megacities to save the ones Eve loves and learn the dark secrets of her past, even if those secrets were better off staying buried. That is Lifelike by Jay Kristoff, and that is going to fulfill the scary book challenge, which is the scream emoji. Next up five star predicted. Now I didn't have anything from my book boxes that I predicted to be a five star necessarily, but there is one that I am very, very excited for that I have super high hopes for. And that is Sky in the Deep by Adrian Young. This book has gotten a lot of hype about fierce female characters and I am all over it. Raised to be a warrior, 17 year old Ellen, Elin? Elin. I'm going with Elin. That sounds better fights alongside her Aska clansmen in an ancient rivalry against the Riki clan. Her life is brutal but simple, fight and survive. Until the day she sees the impossible on the battlefield, her brother fighting with the enemy, the brother she watched die five years ago. Faced with her brother's betrayal, she must survive the winter in the mountains with the Riki in a village where every neighbor is an enemy, every battle scar possibly one she delivered. But when the Riki village is raided by a ruthless clan thought to be a legend, Elin is even more desperate to get back to her beloved family. She is given no choice but to trust Fisk, her brother's friend, who sees her as a threat. They must do the impossible, unite the clans to fight together, or risk being slaughtered one by one. Driven by a love for her clan and her growing love for Fisk, ooh, Elin must confront her own definition of loyalty and family while daring to put her faith in the people that she spent her life hating. I like it. That is... Sky in the Deep by Adrian Young, and that is going to fulfill my five star predicted challenge, which is the star emoji for Emojiathon. Next up, a book you've been seeing everywhere, and that is the emoji. Like, could you could you see my eyes? Because they were the wide eyes, like peeping. Like I see you, girl. <laughs> anyway, the book I picked for that is going to be My Playing Jane by Cynthia Hand, Brody Ashton, and Jody Meadows. Now, I haven't been seeing, obviously, this is uh, the second book, I think, in the My Playing Janies or My Lady Janies or whatever that series called, but I believe they're each standalones, at least I hope they are, because this is what I'm going to read, because this is the one I got in my book box, and I don't have the other one. So, this is a retelling of Jane Eyre, but not really, apparently. So, I'm just going to read the synopsis, because it does seem like it's going to be really, really funny. Best friends with a ghost, Jane. Jane has endured years of hardship and misery and is ready to embark on a new life as the governess of Thornfield Hall. She's rather poor, she's rather plain, also she has terrible taste in men. Just try to tell Charlotte now. Charlotte is an aspiring novelist. Yes, she's that Charlotte. And she's determined to capture her friend Jane, Jane's story, even if it means warming her way into the most epic ghost hunt this side of Wuthering Heights. Alexander is a ghost hunter extraordinaire. Alexander is an agent of the Society for the Relocation of Wayward Spirits. That sounds like an awesome job. He's about to discover something very disturbing going on at a little place called Thorn Thornfield. Reader, there will be murder mayhem, conspiracy, and of course romance. Prepare for an adventure of gothic proportions in which not all is not as it seems and a certain gentleman, Mr. Rochester, is hiding more than skeletons in his closets. And that is... Yes. What's up? 
I'm in the middle of filming a video. <laughs> Had to take a phone call. Alright, and anyway, that is My Plain Jane by Cynthia Hamm, Brody Ashton, and Jody Meadows, and that is going to fulfill my challenge for a book you have been seen everywhere. And I have definitely seen the first one, which is funny because I'm blanking on the name, but I have definitely seen the first one all around because the cover is so catchy. This is the Alcrate exclusive cover. All right, so the next book I am going to talk about is going to complete three of the challenges. Those challenges are Somewhere Other Than Where You Live, which is uh, the Earth emoji, a book set in winter, which is the snowflake emoji, and something that reminds you of your favorite song or a favorite song. Now, um, I have two two possible books for that one. However, the first thing I'm going to discuss is just the book for the first two for sure. That is The Bear and the Nightingale by Catherine Arden. This book is definitely set in a place that I do not live. It is Russia. I live in Maryland. And it is set in the winter because isn't it always fucking winter in Russia? At the edge of the Russian wilderness, winter lasts most of the year. See? I was right. And snowdrifts grow taller than houses. But Vasilia doesn't mind. Va Vas Vasil Vasilis? Vasil... Vasilis? Va I don't know how to say this woman's name. But Vasilisa doesn't mind. I don't know if that's how you say it. It sounds weird. I don't really like it, but that's what I'm going to go with. She spends the winter nights huddled around the embers of a fire with her beloved siblings, listening to her nurse's fairy tales. Above all, she loves the chilling story of Frost, the blue-eyed winter demon who appears in the frigid night to claim unwary souls. Wise Russians fear him, her nurse says, and honor the spirits of the house and yard and forest that protect their homes from evil. After Vasil Vasilisa's mother died, I think I'm just going to say it different every time because I have no idea how to fucking say this name. Like, just call her... Susan, I don't know. After Vasilisa's mother dies, her father goes to Moscow and brings home a new wife. Fiercely devout, city-bred, Vasilisa's new stepmother forbids her family from honoring the household spirits. The family acquiesces, but Vasilisa is frightened, sensing that more hinges upon their rituals than anyone knows. And indeed, crops begin to... Evil creatures of the forest camp near... Creep nearer. What the fuck is wrong with me? And misfortunes stalk the village. All the while, Vasilisa's stepmother grows ever harsher in her determination to groom her rebellious stepdaughter for either marriage or confinement in a convent. Just make sure that's staying up. As danger circles, Vasilisa must defy even the people she loves and call on dangerous gifts she has long concealed. This in order to protect her family from a threat that seems to have stepped from her nurse's most frightening tales. So that is... oh no... So that is The Bear and the Nightingale by Catherine Arden. That is going to complete my Somewhere Other Than Where You Live Earth emoji and also Winter Snowflake emoji. And also, I mean, pretty much any of these books could could fall under the, those categories. So The Bear and the Nightingale could fit my Reminds You of a Favorite Song music note emoji challenge. However, it's not my favorite song, it's just a song that I always sing when I see the Bear and the Nightingale, and that is the Bear and the Maiden Fair from Game of Thrones. The other book that could fit the Remind You of a Favorite Song music note emoji challenge is also, again, going back to Wild Beauty, Anna Marie McLemore. Um, for some reason, this cover always reminds me, this cover and the title, obviously, always remind me of Taylor Swift's Wildest Dreams, which actually is one of my favorite songs, whereas The Bear and the Maiden Fair is definitely not one of my favorite songs. Next up, a book set in the outdoors. Tree emoji. Now, clearly, that could also go for so many of the books I've already talked about, namely I Am Still Alive, the group read, but because I'm trying to read all of my unread book box books, I picked one called The Sa Sandcastle Empire by Kayla Olson. I have not heard like any buzz about this book, but on the back it says The Maze Runner Meets Lost, and that sounds like it could be pretty cool. So, before the war, Eden's life was easy. There was air conditioning, ice cream, and long days at the beach. Then the revolution happened and changed everything. Now a powerful group called the Wolf Pack controls the earth and its resources. Eden has lost everything to them. They killed her family and her friends, destroyed her home, and imprisoned her. 
but Eden refuses to die by their hands. She knows the coordinates to the only neutral ground left in the world, a place called Sanctuary Island, and she is desperate to escape to its shores. Eden finally reaches the island and meets others resistant to the wolves, but their solace is short-lived when one of Eden's new friends goes missing. Braving the jungle in search of their lost ally, they quickly discover that Sanctuary is filled with lethal traps and an enemy they never expected. The island might be deadlier than the world Eden left behind, but surviving isn't the only thing that stands between her and her freedom. So it sounds pretty good. That is The Sandcastle Empire by Kayla Olson. That is going to fulfill my outdoors tree emoji. The next challenge is the headphones emoji, which is to listen to an audiobook. This one is a huge, huge question mark TBD for me. As I have already said, I listen to audiobooks from the library. I always place them on hold, so I never really know when they're going to pop out. I know um, the Libby app actually is really, really good at giving you like estimation so here's a few things that could pop in in September. Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire. Yes. Fire Blood by Ellie Blake, which is book two in the Frostblood saga, which I have raved about several times. Such an underrated YA fantasy. Please go read that if you haven't. Sharp Objects. Mm -mm. And finally, Outlander. Second Chance Summer by Morgan Matson is going to currently fulfill my college beer emoji challenge. Now it's not actually a college book, it doesn't take place in college. They are college aged and that's what I'm going with. If you guys have any recommendations for a good college story, please let me know. I was having trouble coming up with something. I certainly don't have anything. I know Radio Silence will fulfill it, but for the sake of trying to read as many books as possible, I went through my current books and found this one and decided to throw it on the list. Taylor Edwards' family might not be the closest knit. Everyone is a little too busy and overscheduled, but for the most part they get along just fine. Then Taylor's dad gets devastating news and her parents decide that the family will spend one last summer all together at their old lake house in the Pocono Mountains. Crammed into a place much smaller and more rustic than they are used to, they begin to get to know each other again. And Taylor discovers that the people she thought she left behind actually haven't gone anywhere. Her former best friend is still around, as is her first boyfriend, and he's much cuter at 17 than he was at 12. <laughs> As the summer progresses, the Edwards become more of a family. They're more aware than ever that they're battling a ticking clock. Sometimes, though, there's just enough time to get a second chance with family, with friends, and with love. So that is, as of right now, set to fulfill my college beer emoji challenge for Emojiathon. The next one is the knife emoji, which is a thriller, which I am excited about. However, because I do love psychological thrillers. However, but in keeping with my trying to read my owned books and trying to read my book box unreads, I am going back to Lifelike by Jay Kristoff. So I am assuming that this, I mean, it certainly seems like a thriller and scary, like I said before. So I'm going to keep rolling with it. Lifelike by Jay Kristoff. The thriller knife emoji. The next one is a social justice book, which is the fist, like it's not the pounding, it's the raised fist. And for that one, I'm going to go with one that I have not read. That is The Hate You Give by Angie Thomas. Now, it is such an important book to read. I'm not saying that it's not. I think it's probably the most important book of last year. I live right outside of Baltimore City. and. It's heavy and it's depressing and there's no clear way to discuss it without pissing someone off, essentially. Um, I can very much see both sides of both issues and it just makes it very, very hard to discuss and it makes it very hard to just read a book about it because, you know, I was at work when riots were happening downtown. I I stayed with my parents for a couple of nights because I lived so close to the city line and they had released news that rioters were moving upwards towards the county which is where I live and it, it was very scary and it made me very very angry and very very sad just the entire situation. I don't know how to explain what it's like to 
watch the city that you love, that you were born in and raised in, that is your home, fall apart the way the Baltimore City has. Seems like Angie Thomas has done a great job at telling a story about such a heavy and difficult and controversial matter. I'm sure I'm gonna love it because I've actually really enjoyed the different reviews that I've read. I've read reviews from corrections officers who love the book and are like, hey, in no way does this, it's not a cop bashing book, but it is a book that helps teach empowerment and making yourself heard and fighting for what is right. And I think that that's amazing. So that is going to be my social justice raised fist emoji. Angie Thomas, the hate you give. We are coming to the end here. Oh my god, I feel like we've been doing this all day. The next book is a book that is less than 100 pages, and that is the 100 emoji. And for that one, I selected The Tales of Beetle the Bard by J.K. Rowling. I honestly actually think it's more than 100. Oh, it is. Ah, dang, it's 109. I don't know any books under 100 pages. I've actually only read about half of it. So technically, so this is where I am. I'm on page 61. So there's 109 pages, so I'm good. I'm under 100 pages, fam. I'm going with it. This is my less than 100 pages, 100 emoji challenge. The Tales of Beetle the Bard by J.K. Rowling. The next one is takes place on a boat, and that is the ship emoji. And for that one, I am reverting back to The Sandcastle Empire by Kayla Olson. I don't know specifically if it takes place on a boat, but I know you have to take a boat to get to an island, so I would imagine at least a portion of this book takes place on a boat. My personal recommendation for this one, if you haven't read it, is The Woman in Cabin 10, because the whole damn story is on a boat, except for like the first 20 pages, but also a great book, so check that out if you are looking for a recommendation for the takes place on a boat. And the next one and final challenge is read a book in 24 hours, and that is the clock emoji. Now, of course, the most obvious choice seems to be the Tales of Beetle the Bard. So that wraps up the emojiathon portion of this. Um, like I said, I'm going to link Spencer's video below so you can get all the gist. But beyond that, there are three more books on my that were initially going to be on my September TBR that that did not land in one of these challenges, but definitely could. And they are the three remaining I have not read my book bo box books challenges. That's my own personal challenge. The first one is uh, Catching Stars by Kayla Keenan. The Hazelwood by Melissa Albert. The Bird and the Blade by Megan Bannon. That is all I've got. Oh my god, if you stuck through to the end, you're amazing. I love it. If you like the chaos that I bring to booktube, please go ahead and hit subscribe, like, comment. If you want to dislike, you can do, do that, but it's just, it's just ignorant and I don't see why you would do that. Anyway, all my social media is down below. I, I gotta go clean up this damn mess because I have got books all over the place. And that is it for me. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys later. Bye!